Almost 60 years after its debut, Rod Sorling's sci-fi anthology show remains a groundbreaking, genre-busting take on the gray area between the pit of man's fears and the summit of his knowledge. As anyone who has watched all five seasons or spent an entire holiday weekend indoors thanks to all-day marathons can attest, the stories might take place in a dystopian future or on a suburban street similar to your own. The top 5 episodes of Twilight Zone Season 5 will be shown today. Before you begin, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for future updates. Number 5. Stopover in a Quiet Town Season 5 is full of unlikable protagonist characters, which is refreshing in its approach on the one hand. On the other hand, many of them are difficult to sit through. After drinking and driving the night before, a fighting couple wakes up in a deserted town with such a weak setup. The plot, which is overlong at only 24 minutes, limps to a poor twist on which the entire episode rests. Overall, however, the series is devolving from adult screenwriting to cheap sci-fi garbage. Number 4. A Kind of a Stopwatch A kind of stopwatch moves at a breakneck pace, and after the plot of season 4, I was in urgent need of a rapid fix. McNulty is a fast-talking jerk who engages in witty banter with the individuals he upsets. Because the tale is so weak on substance, the script's biting wit was obviously required. Once you understand how the stopwatch works, you can predict how the plot will unfold. Of course, McNulty will try to misuse his newfound powers by stealing a bank. And of course, he will break the watch. Number 3. Nightmare at 20,000 Feet you already know everything there is to know about Nightmare at 20,000 Feet, the screenplay, the, albeit antiquated, effects, the acting, the atmosphere, Shatner, and the twist are all excellent. It's been considered the ideal Twilight Zone episode, and I have to agree, it merits its iconic reputation for pure entertainment value, and it's one that I'd recommend utilizing to introduce someone to the Twilight Zone. It may not be the best episode, and there are episodes on this list that I personally prefer, but it is the gold standard by which I measure all other classic episodes. Number 2. The Bewitched Pool the Bewitch in a Pool isn't as horrible as everyone portrays it to be, but it does have flaws. I was expecting the worst with problems like these and its awful reputation, but I ended up actually enjoying this episode. I'm a sucker for stories about youthful innocence and fantasy. And I thought this episode did a fantastic job of blending the two. Aunt Tisa Neverland gave me a menacing vibe. Nothing overpowering, but enough to make me wonder if Sport and Jeb might be better off going there. Which is an element I wish was more prominent, but I still enjoy it. Number 1. Living Doll one of the most sinister villains in the Twilight Zone's history appears in Living Doll, and it isn't Talkie Tina. Christie's stepfather Eric is so mercilessly cruel that I'm amazed she didn't try to flee through Jeb and Sports Pool. I was anticipating Talkie Tina to be the bad guy in this, so I give her credit for defying my expectations. Talkie Tina is a pop culture figure in her own right. I believe her creepiness is overdone by fans, but, I'm Talkie Tina and I'm going to murder you, is a killer catchphrase. I was genuinely pulling for the killer doll to kill Eric at the end of this episode. And those are the kinds of twists on tried and true formulae that make me adore the Twilight Zone. This was a difficult episode to leave out of the top 5, and it should have been higher on the list. That's an end for today's video. What are your thoughts on our list? Let us know what you think by leaving a comment down here. Also, don't forget like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for our latest videos.